Hello. So I'm Damian Patton, CEO of Banjo. This is Frederick Bjork, who's our Director of Engineering. And tonight we're going to talk to everybody about a little bit about what is Banjo, but more importantly, the Ruby community has been so great to us. We just wanted to share back with what we're doing in Ruby. Uh, and hopefully there's some lessons learned for, from us that other people can learn from, just like we've learned from many of you. So what is Banjo? Each of us have been somewhere in our lives and we've realized that later on that we missed somebody of importance, whether it's a family member, a friend, a colleague, an event, maybe a, a, a one of our favorite music artists were playing somewhere, and we said, wait a minute, I was just there. I just spent the week in there and I didn't know they were there. Banjo was created so you never miss out on that opportunity. Banjo is not a social network, we're a social service. We're a layer that sits on top of all of these social networks, these and many more, on a global level. The reason this is important is because when you open Banjo for the very first time, you'll always have instant community. That means you don't have to sign up for anything, you don't have to be part of social networks to be able to see who's around you. If you were downloading Banjo right now and you opened it for the first time in this room, you would see many of you that are in this room now. You would discover them based on their stuff they share through Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or so on. So we're built on three, three principles. One is discovery. Why is discovery so important? It's because of the zero user problem. The zero user problem means that most social networks and social services fail because they don't have community. They can't build critical mass. Because of the way that we're uh, built over the social layer, we have this instant discovery. It's about proximity. It's about taking all of that discovery and making it relevant because of where you are today, here in this room. But those people that were in Japan that were not able to be here today to listen to this presentation can go into Banjo and they can type in Stanford. And they can discover everyone that's here, that's talking, that's tweeting, that's sharing all the photos that I see pictures uh, that, that are being taken right now. They can see that back in Japan and talk about it. And then it's about context. Why are all these things important to me? And so it's got to have relevance to you. And so it's about discovery, proximity, and context. Frederick's going to talk about why we use Ruby, why we chose it. It's been very important to us, mostly because of the community like you sharing back with us and because of it being a great dynamic language. Frederick? All right. Hi, everyone. So, uh, in order to power this awesome mobile application that we have, we uh, have some goals at Banjo and, and the engineering team, and that is, number one, to build an awesome team of passionate developers who love technology. Number two is to move fast, and when I say fast, move really fast. We pump out new features every week, we integrate the new social network, we integrate more APIs to existing social networks, and when we do that, we also need to release often. <clears throat> Sometimes we release multiple times a day, definitely two or three times a day to production. Um, since we launched Banjo, we've been fortunate enough to uh, have about 400,000 downloads in about four months, which has led from about you know, zero requests per minute to now in the thousands, which is creating some interesting problems. Um, how do we do it? We chose uh, Ruby because it's a dynamic language. It's very uh, well, well suited for the cloud. And, but more importantly, the community. The Ruby community has provided us with, with awesome tools and uh, open source uh, software that we, we're using at Banjo to move faster. Uh, we're also using MongoDB, it's a, it's a schema-less database that <coughs> is, uh, is a document, <coughs> document based and works really well in the cloud as well. Uh, we use test-driven development to to do all of our development in-house, and uh, we're hosting this on Heroku and Mongo HQ. I'm going to move a little bit faster here because we have one minute left. Um, I want to talk about Eventid IO and parallel processing. Uh, like I said before, we're integrating with a bunch of social networks out there. Uh, we have about 30 million accounts already that we've sucked in, that we pre-process, and that we aggregate and deliver to our users in real time. How do we do that? We use Event Machine and Fiber. Event Machine is an evented um, I.O. Uh, <clears throat> gem that we use in conjunction with Fibers because it allows us to write asynchronous code in a synchronous fashion, which is, as Mats mentioned before, uh, it can be you know, like spaghetti code, a bunch of callbacks. But in Ruby, thanks to blocks and yields, that no longer is a problem, which, which is nice. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you for a
question or two? Does anyone have a question? Raise your hand and please wait for the mic to come to you. Question from Hitoshi. Yeah, um, the very basic question is that I just want to add a uh, uh, business flavor on that. How do you make money from that? Yeah, so the question is, how do we make money from, from Banjo? So one of the largest ways right now that people have been bringing us uh, ways to make monetize it is through brands. And it's a way different than you thinking. Several celebrities now are using Banjo to get out their message because using Twitter and Facebook, they're not able to mobilize their fan base in real time. And so by using Banjo, they're able to give these alerts and reach out to people across all the multiple social networks in real time. And uh, brands that support these artists, like Coca-Cola, etc., want to see where their brand is affecting these artists in real time. And they can look at the Twitter feed, but how are those Twitter people connected with Facebook and Instagram people? And you can see all that in real time. People like the NFL have asked us, we can see who's in our stadium talking on Twitter, but we don't know how they're related to everybody else. What did they do before the event, during the event, and after the event? And that's critical to us to make sure that we're getting our brand out in the way that we want it to. And so that's, that's how we're monetizing. All right, thank you very much. Another hand for Amy and Adam. Thank you. And our next pitch is from Pradeep Alankumar.